Hi there guys, I hope you have had a good day. So apparently Vasily Lomachenko has undergone shoulder surgery following his fight with Teofimo Lopez. Apparently he felt problems with it during his training for the fight and six weeks before that he went to a doctor and ultimately he did carry on training and then went into the fight. So we cannot say that this was a problem for Lomachenko in the fight because it wasn't. Lomachenko was controlled and outboxed by Lopez. But it's as simple as that. So yes, maybe he has had shoulder surgery but I don't think that that played a part at all in how the fight played out. I think that Lopez just bettered him in every single aspect. And ultimately, that is the reason why Lopez won, because he was the better man on the night. Now, it wasn't as wide as many people say, wasn't as wide as the judges gave it, I don't believe anyway. I think it was 7-5 or 8-4 at the most, but it definitely was Lopez who won the fight, definitely, 100%. And realistically the only way Loma could get any success was when he made a fight of it so put all of those technical attributes away it was just the fighting side of it that gave Loma success and a lot of the time in boxing it's not just about those technical attributes that Loma has it's not just that it's about who can make the adjustments at the highest level Loma is normally king at that but he had to do something in this fight that maybe he hasn't done so much during his career and that was just a fight get into the pocket and trade with his opponent. He's not really down with that. He's normally a fighter who will box and yeah, he does get stuck in and land some incredible punches, but he doesn't ever make a fight of it. Proper inside fighting, sitting on the chest of his opponent, trading up, making it rough. That is what he needed to do against Lopez, but Lopez was also too strong on the inside. I mean, Loma got some good shots away and won majority of the rounds that he did actually win by doing that. But still, Lopez was too strong, too powerful, had a brilliant jab, and that is the reason why Lopez won, because he was controlling everything that Lomachenko was doing. He went in there not thinking about knocking Loma out, which a lot of fighters do because they think that they cannot outbox him, so they're just going to knock him out or try and knock him out. That's not necessarily the way to go about it, or the way Lopez went about it, because he believed in his physical attributes, his abilities, his boxing skills, and IQ, and he put that into motion when he got in there with Loma, so he knew that he was good enough to beat him. He said continuously in the build-up to the fight that he was going to beat him, he was going to box him, and his boxing IQ was better than everyone was giving him a credit for. And true, it was very true. When he got in there with Loma, his boxing IQ really did show on the night, and that is what won. That is what won him the fight. Loma just could not deal with the size, strength, power, boxing IQ, ultimately, of Teofimo Lopez. Lopez said after the fight that Loma is basic. If you take certain things away from him, he is basic. And I think that what he means by that is that it's not just about making it complicated. You can overcomplicate things like wait for the jab to come, slip it, dip under and throw an uppercut or something like that. Walk them onto the punch. Yeah, you can do things like that, but sometimes it comes down to the simple things. That is what Lopez done. He kept it simple. Sounds crazy, but that is what he done. Good jab to dictate the long distance. Then, when Loma got close, he had the power to keep him at mid-range, so Loma was not allowed to get on the inside, which is what he needed to do, and Loma knew there were some powerful punches coming his way when he did try to do that, but towards the end of the fight, he just threw caution to the wind and went for it. He had to, otherwise he was just going to be outpointed by a large margin, which he was anyway on the scorecards, which didn't reflect the fight in my opinion. Lopez definitely won, but ultimately the scorecards did not reflect the fight, but still, Loma was kept on the outside, he was kept at a dictated distance by Lopez. And whenever Loma did bring in that fancy footwork and step around, swivel around to the side, Lopez just stepped around with him. I mean, sounds simple enough, but I know it's harder to do in the ring, but that's the thing, Lopez kept it simple. Step around with him when he steps around, create the angles. If he's going to do that, then you go around at that angle with him, because then he cannot land the punches, because ultimately... Loma doesn't have the physical attributes of Lopez, so Lopez can keep him on the outside because what Loma needs to do is create those angles so he has a target to hit. If Lopez does swivel with him, then there is no target to hit. The distance they are fighting at remains the same, so that is what Lopez done. He dictated the distance and pace of the fight, something that we haven't really seen anyone do in there with Loma before. So given that Loma is undergoing shoulder surgery, would that have played a part in this fight? No, not at all. I don't believe it would, because apparently Loma is going to have surgery and he will be out until late January. That is when he will look to return. 
and whether he stays at lightweight or whether he goes down is something that remains to be seen at the moment. But Lopez is probably going to stay at lightweight for one more fight, I believe, defend the undisputed titles, and then maybe go up and wait and look for the winner of Josh Taylor versus Jose Ramirez, which would be a great fight. I mean, he can kind of get that fight because he's undisputed at lightweight, so undisputed lightweight versus undisputed super lightweight. There's that dynamic there, so that would be interesting. But maybe there is a rematch or room for a rematch in there between Lopez and Loma. I would like to see it. I think it would be great. I mean, Lopez conclusively won the first fight. No shoulder injuries, nothing would have changed that. I mean, we could see that Loma was at his best. I mean, I know it doesn't look like it, but Loma was still doing some incredible things in the ring with Lopez. If you watch the footwork, the movement, what he was trying to do, it's just Lopez did not allow him to do it. Because Loma does a lot of escaping to the right. He'll land his punches and then he'll create angles coming off to the side. That is how he overcomes physical advantages with his opponents when he's in there with bigger opponents. Because he's not necessarily an out and out inside fighter sitting on the chest, landing body shots and things like that. What he does is he fights on that mid to close distance. And he does that by creating angles. He doesn't necessarily sit in the pocket and trade. But that is what he was being forced to do if he wanted to have any success against Lopez. He wasn't allowed to use and create those fancy angles that he was used to doing because Lopez was always countering that. He was not allowing him to escape to the right, which is what he always tries to do. If he is not allowed to do that, then Loma is being broken down. He's having things taken away from him. So that is what Lopez done. Kept it basic like he explained. Broke things down. Took things away from Lomachenko. And ultimately, that is what he done. He didn't just implement his own game plan. He was working on what does Loma do well and how can I take that away from him? And there is no taking anything away from Lopez for what he done in that ring with Lomachenko. And now he can go on to some mega fights, maybe a rematch, maybe a fight with Devin Haney if he comes through Gamboa, which he should do if Devin Haney is all he has cracked up to be and all what he has promoted to be, then he should be beating Gamboa because I think we will all agree. Gamboa is not the fighter he once was. He's been beaten recently by Javonta Davis as well, so he's not the fighter he once was. So Devin Haney, if he is worth his salt, will beat him. Then maybe there is a fight between those two. Maybe there's a fight between Lopez and the winner of Ryan Garcia versus Luke Campbell. In fact, I'd rather see the winner of Luke Campbell versus Ryan Garcia fight Teofimo Lopez. I think it's a better fight because I think that the Garcia-Campbell fight has more at stake. It's a bigger fight. It's a better fight than Haney versus Gamboa. And whoever wins that fight has a better name on their resume than Devin Haney would. So that means they should get the shot at the Undisputed Champion. It would be a more interesting fight, say Ryan Garcia versus Teofimo Lopez or Luke Campbell versus Teofimo Lopez. I know that Devin Haney is a great fighter, but the Gamboa fight is not as big in my opinion as Ryan Garcia versus Luke Campbell. That is why the winner of Garcia Campbell should get the shot at Teofimo Lopez, but they won't, it will likely be Devin Haney. Or, in fact, the winner of Luke Campbell versus Ryan Garcia will fight Devin Haney, because that's what it's for. It's for a shot at Haney. And talking about Garcia Campbell, it's interesting because they have moved that to earlier in the day, because obviously Spence versus Garcia are fighting that night as well. And that's kind of strange, because I think that Garcia versus Campbell is a better fight than Errol Spence versus Danny Garcia. I just do. I know that one's a world title fight, and I think Errol Spence is a brilliant fighter, but I mean, Danny Garcia, I don't believe, is the best at welterweight. I think that his best weight was probably super lightweight. I think that he was destructive at that weight. I think he was powerful, had a great jab, brilliant jab, very sharp, very fast. But I think at welterweight, he's not too small, but I just don't think he's the same kind of fighter. He's not the same kind of beast that would wreck through that division. I mean, He's going to get beat by Errol Spence in my opinion. I mean, I know that Danny Garcia has been a world champion at welterweight. I just believe that his best weight was at super lightweight. That was where he was most dangerous and most likely to become number one in that division. But I guess the money fights are at welterweight. But still, that doesn't take away from the fact that I believe that Campbell versus Garcia is a much better fight than Errol Spence versus Danny Garcia. That one will be a good fight. But I just think that we all want to see Errol Spence versus Terence Crawford and... That's what we want to see. We don't want to see Terence Crawford kill Brook. Well, we do. That's going to be a good fight. But we just want to see them in together. That is what we want to see. And until that time comes, the fights that they are in aren't going to be as big as that. So I guess they're not going to have the same kind of hype. Because we are questioning whether that fight will ever happen. Top Rank and PBC 
Notoriously not great for working together, but how did they make Deontay Wilder versus a Tyson Fury? Both in the same camps as Errol Spence and Terence Crawford. They made that fight, so why can't they make this one? So, all of these interim fights for Terence Crawford and Errol Spence before they make the big one. Doesn't really work for me. We just want to see them in together. We want to see the best fights. Like Lomachenko versus Teofimo Lopez. Two fighters putting it all on the line. In a big fight. That's what we want to see. Maybe Teofimo Lopez has set the precedent for other fighters to start doing that. Hopefully they do. But guys, anyway, what are your thoughts on this? Make sure you leave your thoughts in the comments below. Leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new. Thanks guys.